hold tight as we head into some of the most exiting news from the previous week. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to stay up to date on all things Formula One. Earlier this week, Ferrari were under pressure when Craig Scarborough, a Formula One technical expert, raised concerns about Ferrari's front wing design on their new SF23 car under their unveiling this previous Tuesday. The front wing appears to resemble the one used by Mercedes during the previous season, which was subsequently banned by the FIA due to the inclusion of fin-shaped pods. At the 2022 Mexican Grand Prix, Mercedes tried to use an updated front wing with these pods. However, the FIA modified their regulations to prohibit the use of front wings similar to the one used by Mercedes during that race. And while we are talking about Mercedes, did you notice something off when the new U14 was displayed? Well, some eager F1 fans managed to discover that the Mercedes logo at the front of the wing was slightly off-center, making jokes about whether or not this could have an impact on the car when turning to the left. In recent years, wet conditions and low visibility have been a hot topic in F1, especially following controversial races like the 2021 Belgian GP. During the F1 commission meeting, it was confirmed that the wet weather package project will proceed and cars will be equipped with wheel arches aimed at reducing spray. The project will be tested on the track during the middle of this season. The FIA has already conducted its own CFD research, and teams are now authorized to conduct wind tunnel and CFD work on the effect of the arches outside of the aerodynamic testing restrictions and cost cap. A technical directive will be issued to enable teams to carry out such research beyond the ATR limits with track testing scheduled for Q2 or Q3 of 2023. According to a statement, the FIA appreciates the team's offers to support the wet weather package project, as presented in the last F1 commission meeting. Last year, Nicholas Tombazes, the new FIA single-seater director, revealed some details about the project, stating that they anticipated the arches would only be used on a few occasions each year. Additionally, CFD simulations have been conducted to evaluate the effect of the devices on overall aerodynamics and spray. Once a solution is found, prototypes will be built and tested on cars to assess their performance. The Formula One Commission has granted teams permission to exceed the cost cap by an additional $1.2 million, 1 million pounds, this year. Although the base cost cap has decreased to $135 million, 11 million pounds. For the current year, there are certain exemptions available to teams. The cost cap has been loosened to account for the 2023 F1 schedule, which will include more than 21 races. Teams are already permitted an additional allowance for these races, and the value of that concession has now been increased. F1 and the FIA said in a joint statement that the cost cap adjustment for races beyond 21 has risen from $1.2 to $1.8 million per race, given that the trend has been towards more expensive flyaway races. In 2021, the cost cap was established and teams were evaluated for their adherence to it for the first time last year. Red Bull was deemed to have overspent while Aston Martin and Williams were found to have violated other regulations. The Commission also ratified modifications to the rules aimed at making it simpler to enforce the cost cap. It approved language that allows for easier access to factories for the FIA auditing team, which would enable them to ensure teams and power unit manufacturers comply with financial, technical, and sporting rules. The Drag Reduction System DRS, at five Formula One tracks will undergo significant changes, according to the FIA. The governing body evaluated the effectiveness of DRS at various circuits and made modifications to enhance or reduce overtaking difficulty. The changes will be implemented at Bahrain, Jeddah, Melbourne, Baku, and Miami, and will involve adjustments to detection and activation zones. For the upcoming Australian Grand Prix in Melbourne, the fourth DRS zone, which was removed last year for safety reasons, will be reinstated. The FIA has also confirmed various circuit upgrades ahead of the 2023 Formula One season. The Jeddah Cornet circuit will have improved visibility on corner entry, while the Baku City circuit will be resurfaced. 
Following the team's back pain complaints last year, the Miami International Autodrome will also be resurfaced, and Zandvoort will have 1.5 meters added to the space between pit stop positions. In addition, Carter will have a new pit and paddock building for its return to the calendar this year. Despite planning to run a version of the circuit without the final chicane for F1 races, the circuit de Barcelona Catalunya is not included in the list of changes. At the preseason testing at Bahrain International Circuit on Thursday, Max Verstappen picked up where he left off in 2022, outpacing Fernando Alonso in the Aston Martin to claim the top spot on the timesheets. Verstappen was in the car for the entire day, racking up over 150 laps and also leading both the morning session and the afternoon session. Ferrari could finish the day with a third and fourth place, with their new team boss, Frederick Vasseur, praised the 2023 lineup and also spoke highly of the new SF23. Lando Norris placed fifth with Lewis Hamilton and Alex Alvin, who led the morning mileage charts right behind. Joe Guan Yu finished eighth fastest, just under a second off the pace of George Russell and the new Williams rookie Logan Sargent, to conclude the top 10. Zhao Guanyu shot all the way to the top of the timesheets to conclude the second day of preseason testing, followed by Max Verstappen and Fernando Alonso, who also drove more than 130 laps on day two. Following them was Nick De Vries in the AlphaTauri in fourth and Nico Hulkenberg, coming in on a fifth place overall. Sainz's morning stint was good enough for a sixth place finish. Following him was the new rookie Logan Sargent, who impressively managed to drive more than 150 laps, placing him in seventh. Charles Leclerc did not have the best of days and finished the day in eighth place, with Oscar Piastri and Pierre Gasly to complete the top 10 of preseason testing day two. Sergio Perez ended the preseason testing in Bahrain, how his teammate Max Verstappen started on Thursday and finished at the top of the timesheets. He was closely followed by Lewis Hamilton and Valtteri Bottas in second and third place with Bottas completing a total of 131 laps. In fourth and fifth place, we have the two Ferrari drivers Charles Leclerc and Carlos Sainz with a modest day at work. Following them, we have Yuki Tsunoda and Kevin Magnussen, who both look to be very competitive in the midfield picture. George Russell ended up taking eighth, Fernando Alonso taking ninth and Philip Drugovic in tenth to complete the top ten at the last day of preseason testing in Bahrain. Drive to Survive's fifth series comprises high draw episodes, a few with a handful of memorable moments and a couple of predictable ones. While Netflix offers the option to watch at speeds of up to 150%, even this pace felt sluggish for the ghastly Tsunoda bromance episode. Now with 50 episodes under its belt, a sixth season of Drive to Survive has already been confirmed, bringing the total to 60. Most F1 enthusiasts have probably already decided whether or not the show is worth their time. While I wouldn't want to miss it, its narrative should still be taken with a grain of salt, as Verstappen realized from the start. The fifth season was released on Netflix on Friday, 24 February. If you haven't already, make sure to check it out. That's all we got for this week's recap, but don't be alarmed because we will be back next week with even more updates. And as always, like, share, and subscribe for more Formula One content.